welcome to another episode of Film House. We're talking about a movie near and dear to me because I didn't see it. Uh, it's brought to you by Mac Weldon. That's our sponsor today. We're going to be talking about them later in the show. But for now, I want to introduce James, Bruce, and Elise. Hi. Who Hello. All made a weird choice this weekend and saw Justice League. Yeah. I was. I look. I was kind of excited to see it. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought. I thought. You know yeah. what? How bad could it be? <laughs> and I didn't know what to do. And Bruce said to me, he said, "Elise, don't try to see every movie. Just see one." Justice League. Yeah. <laughs> Just see one, and that's what I did, and it. And I understood once I did it. Uh, yeah. A little, little quick background on myself. I am probably the biggest DC fan in this room, or at agree. least once was. I would agree. I've watched uh, every <laughs> episode of the Justice League TV show that, like Justice League that, and Unlimited, and like Batman Superman show. He loves it all. I watched it's it. Coming up. I've watched it at least three times. I'm um, actually pretty. Oh dear God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I am a. a I'm. Pretty well versed in all the goings on, and I had zero interest in seeing this movie this weekend. I, I did everything else. I cleaned my house instead of go see this movie. I didn't. I just that's your didn't. first introduction. <laughs> that awful. in a nutshell. <laughs> that's the movie, kind of in a nutshell. Is what we just saw on screen was the first time Bruce Wayne meets Aquaman. Uh -huh. They have this long conversation, and it's building up to. Like, Bruce Wayne doesn't know, he just knows there's this guy that has, has this reputation of mythology up in the north. And then, uh... <laughs> they never say where it is. Yeah, up in the north. The north. And then, Canada. uh... Let's go with Canada. And then, at the end of it, the end of the interaction is Jason Momoa taking off his shirt, looking muscular, but not anything superhuman, and then doing a... What I did in House of Pain training, falling on your back uh, and and slapping your hand on a crash pad, and then the next shot is him zipping away, and you're like, wait, that's wait, so what? That's what he does? They show a little fish trail as he, yeah. as he swims away, it and you're like, great. well, there he goes. I yeah. was laughing really hard. So, um, warning: we're gonna do spoilers on this because I don't care. Okay. Um, I don't think there's anything they could do story wise that would surprise me because I feel like I've seen it all, I've heard it all, and they're just gonna be pulling from other parts of. Justice League comic books and lore, so... Uh, I would I'm also not... say that this movie is not a movie where the story really matters. I know people are spoiler-sensitive in our modern age. You've If you've seen a trailer for this, there are, if you're there watching are no this footage, yeah, there are no you've seen the movie, the only basically. The only twist is that, well, spoilers, that Superman comes back to life. Which is not a twist. Which is not a twist. Because I was, no. I was saying to Elise before we even saw the movie, yeah. he... His icon is all over the marketing for this right. thing. Some exec, some some person was designing it where they were like, okay, well, the expectation is that our audience thinks Superman's dead, even though at the end of Batman v Superman, it's kind of implied that he's alive. I mean, but yeah, you'd but, have to be dragging your knuckles pretty hard. You would to but know for that those people. Superman's it felt like the marketing this. team was like, okay, well, we'll focus on these other characters, mm. and then some executive said. Do you realize that after Disney's Mickey Mouse, the most recognizable symbol in the world, he's reading yeah. a BuzzFeed article, is Superman? Nah, no. And you go, you put that fucking shield on there. <laughs> so like, I did. But we didn't take pictures, promo photos for him. You well, put that fucking shield on I still remember, there. All in. I don't remember anyone leaving the theater after Batman vs. Superman going, oh my god, I can't believe they killed Superman. Because everyone's like, yeah, he'll be back. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. it's because Superman's come back to life like three or four times over the course of 40 years. So right. at this point, we all knew he was coming back. Regardless, it's a spoiler. Um, so that was the only thing I think that was in this entire movie that I even gave a shit about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the rest, the rest of it, all the all no, everything I'd heard was true. Was that they're fighting off the the winged monkeys from Wizard of Oz, and that like uh -huh. that they're they're like the the drones of apocalypse. It, it, also, Dark Side's not the bad guy. Steppenwolf's the bad guy. Sure, it's his like. But who does he work for? Well, he Dark says Dark Side. He says Except it in the movie. Except he calls expi explicitly refers to it as Mother. Well, no, but then he, he also says the word. I know. So he goes Mother Dark Side, and, and I was like, like Oh, cool. Mother Mother is actually someone else, and okay. who lives on Apocalypse. I'm just saying that's the confusion. That's so. What yeah. this movie is, is what would happen if Zack Snyder made half a movie. Um, while a uh, Warner Brothers executive held a gun to him and said, this better be Avengers, right? Yeah. We need our Avengers, right? And then Zack Snyder bailed out of that when it became too much for him, and Joss Whedon came in and then made a completely different moody, movie, and then they Frankensteined it all together. Some people would say that Zack Snyder left because of that family tragedy, not yeah. because mm -hmm. it was too much for him. No, well, yeah. So. I'm just saying, the idea of... It was too much for him. He said that helming this movie with everything yeah. that's happening in his personal life. But it's just, there's no setup. And and this is coming from someone who bemoans the constant Marvel machine of straight-up character arcs. I will sit through more Ant-Man 
if it means I get a Civil War. Yeah. Which I, by the way, watched one day before I went and saw this. Civil War is awesome. And Civil War is great, yeah. and it's the payoff of a bunch of other setups. Mm -hmm. This doesn't have any setup. I was going to ask, how how is the inclusion of, like, six other new characters in a world where we only, we, we've seen a Wonder Woman movie, we've seen a Batman vs. Superman, we've had no Aquaman, no Flash, no Cyborg, they're just sort of afterthoughts in other movies. How was it just, ma was it just like a, was the movie like an assembly thing? So, well, I saw... I saw it with Autumn, and so Autumn has, she doesn't really have any attachment to any of these characters. I know who the characters are just because I know them through the- Six times, by the way. Through There's six times in this movie where something, a projectile comes at someone and the dodge it, yeah. <laughs> six times I counted. Um, oh, Jesus. I, I know this because of pop culture, but she walked out saying, who are those people? And like, I feel like she should the, know- The other Justice League members? Any of them. Like, and that oh, was sort of the fact God. of the matter is that like, it's not a Batman you've ever seen. It's not even a Superman you've ever seen. Like, Man of Steel is entirely different because f when he comes back to life, he's angry and he's not Superman. Yeah, he's real angry. Yes, yeah, he's got so, that coffin. Why is he angry? I don't know. Well, he doesn't remember it's, anything. It's, it, the movie is confused about why right. everyone's doing what they're so, doing. The um, only character that pays off, or that uh, that knows her character is Wonder Woman. That's it. Yeah. That's the only Which one. Is, is um, clearly because they figured out that tone in a different movie. Yeah. And then they applied that to this movie after the fact. I did appreciate that they at least seemed to give each character a substantial amount of screen time. They tried, yeah. It wasn't really like a Suicide Squad where that guy doesn't get a title card <laughs> sort of thing. Like Aquaman crosses his arms and jumps jumps back, but at least they give him that. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, they show um, him go to Atlantis too. Like they they show that whole deal. So what, yeah. is, what is the the main plot? I guess. So I'll, I'll, I'll ask. Knowing the last thing I remember is. Batman vs Superman. The only connection I can think of was was Batman had a dream where he saw what's his face, the Flash, mm -hmm. and he was he, and he wakes up like wow, what was that? Anything. He he had the whole apocalypse vision or Doesn't whatever. Have anything to do with anything. Literally any nothing. Of that. Yeah. None of that really? has anything to do with no. any of that. So he oh. just knows that he's the Flash. But the, the flying monkeys are there. Yeah. Yes, they did reuse those <laughs> those assets. Um, uh, none of that has anything to do with any of that. Uh, as far as I can tell, the events of Batman v Superman. Okay, got it. They do. There's a throwaway line. I'm trying. Mm. I was trying to remember what what the connection was. Superman's dead. Thus, Earth One or whatever is vulnerable now. Okay. There was this implication that Superman, this unstoppable being. There's another time it happens. By the way, um, <laughs> Superman, this unstoppable being, was signaling to other entities around the, the universe, universe yeah. and also gods yeah. that that this planet is off limits. Oh, there's right? a form of deterrence right. to other alien like, invaders. Beware of dog right, right. kind yeah. of sign. Superman dying meant that the Earth was vulnerable right. and thus some of these entities saw now Earth as a potential place to victimize. Okay. That's as close as it comes. Other than that, straight up a teleporter appears out of the sky and a bad guy comes out yeah. of it. <laughs> it pops comes out. Comes out of it, and 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 the uh, the Amazons, the Amazons, the Atlanteans, and the humans. Apparently, this is why DC sucks. Uh, millions or thousands or hundreds of years ago, aligned to fight off this demon Steppenwolf. invasion. Steppenwolf, yeah. Who comes down with three boxes? It's got three tesseracts because yeah. they yeah. saw yeah. Avengers called, and they they DC boom, like that. Boom boxes or whatever. No, mother, mother boxes. boxes. Mother boxes. Which is the worst yeah. name in the world. They come down every time they said it. I cringe. With three three mother boxes, then and when the mother boxes, there are very powerful boxes, basically big batteries. When the batteries are combined, it it's like basically the same thing that Zod had. It changes the planet right. into a hellscape. Sure. It just, right? So basically, they said it creates when it destroys. So it destroys the planet it's on and mm -hmm. turns the planet that it's on into a hellscape. So it makes it a, a land for Stephen. Stephen yeah. likes that. And, yeah, and, and that's he, exact, that's all they say, really. Yeah. Tried, <laughs> his cold he tried bones. to do it a really long time ago. He tried to come to Earth and do it a really long time ago. What it's unclear them? how long because... Uh, it, the Lord of the Rings he, armies. He was fighting against the Lord of the Rings yeah. Wait, and man. Green Lantern. The first men. And oh, wait, the they, show, they show Green Lantern? Briefly, yeah. very briefly. Yeah. And he okay. immediately gets visited. Um, well, I mean, that's and Shazam's, okay. there's like a Shazam guy oh, there in there Shazam? too. Oh, the guy it. firing lightning is like, oh, okay. feels like he's probably from that world. Okay. Um, aligned with the Amazon, Amazonians, the Atlanteans, Atlanteans before they went underwater, sure, I guess. Sure, yeah. 
and then man, <laughs> they all got together, they fought off Steppenwolf, okay. separated the boxes, and said, to ensure that this never happens again, we'll seal them away. Right. So the Amazonians will guard one, the uh, Atlanteans will guard one, and then man will dig a six inch deep Yeah, it's deep like barely in the so ground. shallow. No. And then dump the box in there <laughs> and very, forget where it was. They, 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 like, the smallest hole I'd ever seen. they barely tried, and then they were like, and we did it so nobody would remember, but there's like six of them standing there. That They're like, all oh, no, where well, the box is. I mean, said, is there there's no found, talk of like destroying it, throwing it in lava or anything? I don't know that they, they know they, how. I don't think they could. They can only um, dig six inches so deep. <laughs> the best thing about that is all of those three scenarios, the man box is the hardest to find yeah which is because, not because it's just right away there because there's a uh, no, I, he, cyborg's like i found it well <laughs> uh, he's like he's like i'm gonna use the internet i've got it well it was like a <laughs> hiding in plain sight sort of yeah it's, uh, plan. right away fine but uh but yeah so so basically a teleporter opens from the sky right into amazon land and then it just goes straight into where the box is and he goes thank you yeah. and then <laughs> Like there's some fighting, but basically he goes thank you and then yep. leaves. That's what it. happens. And then and then <laughs> then the Atlantis one, he goes a teleporter appears from the sky yep. and he goes I'm gonna grab this and they go no and he goes yeah and then he takes it yep. and then he's got two uh -huh. and I guess he can't find the third one because he doesn't have the internet. I don't know. So then he goes to <laughs> Russia. Then he goes to Russia <laughs> and inside a m missile a nuclear silo. Decides this is the perfect place, even though it already looks, by the way, like his shitty planet. Yeah, it does. You're right. He, like, you could have just stayed in this. I guess it was supposed to be Three Mile Island, but I don't know. It, yeah, it was like it was like uh, uh, what is it? Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. It was an implied Chernobyl that he went to. Yes. Then, all right. So now it's okay. a race to find the third box, which I guess was used to make Doomsday. Yes. So they find it in the Doomsday area. Okay. But it was also used to make Cyborg. But and it's also with Superman's. Uh, uh, Ship, so yeah. Superman ship. Everything's there. <laughs> well, so the implication being that he, man discovered it, however much time ago, and they've been s Using searching it, it yeah. to try and find like energy source to figure out how to use it, not realizing the implication of it. Part of that usage, and by the, if you guys can clear up the timeline for me, it's all mixed up. <laughs> because in Batman v Superman, Wonder Woman watches video of Cyborg being created. Right? Yes. Yes. And it's like, ah, and you see the screaming right, right, body or right. whatever. But the way they talk about it, it made it sound like Cyborg wasn't made until after Doomsday came back because they brought in the scientists to talk about the, the box. Well, so maybe he was trying to, doing experiments on Cy... It was weird. I don't even want to like, talk about it, sounded, it because it's stupid. Cyborg was talking about it. It sounded no, like yeah, he right. was like like he was confused about when he existed. Meanwhile, Batman's back from his second run at Jack in the Box that day. <laughs> uh -huh. He's stuffed into his twenty-year-old three-piece suit that he just won't give up, and he's hunting to build his Avengers. So <laughs> he's got Aquaman, or, <laughs> who is really easy to find. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. And Wonder Woman. It's clear that Batman is interested in Wonder Woman, and I'm like, no fucking way. Oh, yeah, that's right. There is no to man in this franchise that's good There's enough for Wonder part. Woman. That's right. the hole that's they the dig. <laughs> deep hole. Yeah. Where they hide the most important artifact. No Sorry, man in here is good enough for Wonder Woman. Poor Amber Heard. I was really glad that she had a part in this movie. She was mainly CG, I, though. She was terrible. <laughs> her acting was atrocious. She tried to have a British accent, kind of, but I was really rooting for her because I was glad that she was getting this part. That was unfortunate. Who did she play? She's Mrs. Aquaman? Yeah, basically. She Aqua. Okay. Sister. So, okay. She it's half weird. sister or something. It's base, it looks like <laughs> if you had an improv troupe make a movie, it would be similar to this. Like, you're like, you need to make a movie about a team coming together, but you have to improvise it all. You're not allowed to write anything down. You're not allowed to, like, figure anything out before, and you just need to do it. And every single time you finish a scene, we're going to fly you to another part of the world, <laughs> and you got to figure it out while you're there. Um, and so, like, even Aquaman... He, Batman comes to him first. He goes, heard you swim, will you join me? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, he goes, no, and swims away, yeah, right? Yeah, that's true. Not that's because he's an asshole. He's not even gonna have a hero's journey. He has a reputation already of protecting people, yeah. these people yeah. from. He likes protecting humans up yeah. the north. And there's a great moment when Batman's like, I put a tracker in his coat, but then he took off his coat before he jumped in the ocean. It's Wait, he says weird. that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? Alfred I didn't even realize like, that. Yeah, there's so many weird things, and this is like, weird screenwriting, student screenwriting stuff where it's like every line should be motivated by the scene, what are your yeah. characters wants and needs, that this movie just is defying at every 
turn. You know, like there's well, people that say things that mean nothing. Well, that's because somebody said probably they're like, well, what would Batman do if he found Aquaman? He'd definitely try and track yeah. him. Yeah, he'd but slip then, his coat. <laughs> it was like put it in the inside pocket of his jacket. Yeah, what? Then he takes his jacket off and then goes in the water. Yeah. And so there's a throwaway. It's great. Line. I love this movie. Um, so anyway, <laughs> huh. Aquaman yeah, a great has also apparently come to terms with the fact that he is part human and part. Atlantean, sure. right? Yeah, Wait, he has. So he has an origin story in this too. Briefly, briefly. Okay. That's what Amber Heard's entire job is. She shows up on screen to explain what the fuck Aquaman is in the water dome. This is one of my favorite green screens. And so there's more powerful women for us to look <laughs> yeah. up to. I don't even know if they were thinking about that, but I'm sure they were. When they when the the teleporter comes from the sky and then they take the mother box, <laughs> right? He just says, "I'm going to take this." Yeah. Aquaman shows up. Because he gets a bad feeling. He gets a good tip, yeah. That something's going wrong, except when he arrives, there's an implication that he never hangs out there. Yeah, that's true. They're all like, you, they, they, you they show have, up They haven't in seen him in years. She's yeah. like, she's like yeah. well, where have you been? You're barely even an Atlantean. Yeah. You know, you have no allegiance to this. But it's weird because he just go like. They explain it. They try to explain it with a one line, like a, sort of like, you fought with my father and my father doesn't like you and you don't like my father. And he's like, yeah, you're right. But I'm back to help. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, she's like, you need to step up and do. So. Yeah. The whole point of the scene is for her to say, you need to step up and do I'm, something. I'm interested to hear. What, I'm interested to hear what you think after you see it, Adam, because I feel like me too. It's. It, I actually didn't really dislike no, no, any I didn't, of I didn't them. I hate it. Well, any of the characters, I was like, I don't dislike Cyborg. I don't dislike the Flash. Yeah. Like, I just, I actually kind of like. I'm enjoying watching all of them. That's good. There's such such there's such cheese. Like Cyborg is wearing a sweat shoot a sweat sh- suit. That says Go- "Property of Gotham, Gotham City, City" on the Gotham City on the breast, yeah. okay. and I'm like, "Oh god, this is so cheesy!" Well, and then the Flash, it, Billy Crudup is his dad. Spoiler, <laughs> uh, whatever. <laughs> and his dad's in jail for like killing his mom. Well, that, that's well, the Flash's origin story. Unproven. Uh, the only reason I know that is because it's the show. Oh, so, which so has nothing what? to do with the movie. No, so I'm, that's another weird thing too, in terms of like introducing oh. these characters. Is there's like a quick thing where they go, Wah! and so like like. Cyborg comes in and he talks with his dad briefly and his dad's like don't you remember that explosion <laughs> and you're like oh they're gonna show you what how he right. came to be but then uh, he goes he goes sure. yeah I remember it <laughs> what's yeah. a big deal I'm a robot now like like uh. it's kind of like they gloss over and yeah, then the property then, of God then Cyborg sees Flash and then he's like what's you what's your situation he's like what were you struck by lightning and he goes something like that and you're like oh we're gonna see no. and they go no they move on yeah well, then, like he eats a pizza fast the reason they do that is because what they want they wanted you to think was oh shit i can't wait to see that yeah in the origin film that's coming out in a year yeah. <laughs> i'm not i'm totally serious that's exactly <laughs> sure. why they did it and yeah, i'm sure they, right. they oh, think people they're they think they're driving interest they think okay. they're planting a seed well yeah. i have i have some more questions but first okay, cool. i want to remind you guys that this episode of film house is brought to you by mac weldon mac weldon is better and whatever you are wearing right now, um, that kind of, kind of for me, I'm wearing Mac Weldon. Wearing, wearing Mac Weldon. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I guess, I guess technically it's true because you'd be getting a new pair. Yeah, it works. No, that's a good point. That's fine. Anyway, so yeah, Mac Weldon does believe in smart design, premium fabrics, and simple shopping. Uh, if you've ever shopped on their website or you've used any of the many easy to use websites, it's just like that. Super simple. Click what you want. Easy peasy. Done and done. There's many other places where it's much harder to buy things, but they make it. Very easy. I'll tell you about that later. Anyway, Mac Weldon will be the most comfortable underwear. Socks, shirts, undershirts, hoodies, and sweatpants that you will ever wear. James can speak to that. He wears his weekenders. His, uh, this weekend. You were playing Destiny? I, I was wearing my weekenders watching Justice League. Really? <laughs> yep. Man, you got to be comfortable code. watching this movie. I know, I'm thinking about bringing lots of comfortable clothes. to <laughs> Bring <laughs> just, a blanket. Just tuck her in. I guess it's only two hours long. Anyway. Mass. <laughs> yeah. uh, so Mac Weldon wants you to be comfortable. So if you do not like your first pair of whatever you buy, you can keep it. And they will still refund you, no questions asked. So not only does Mac Weldon's underwear, socks, and shirts look good, they perform very well too. I always work out in mine. I don't like working out or sleeping in anything else. Uh, it's still my my favorite underwear to date. It's all I wear. James too, Bruce. What? Why'd you give me? I'm a just look? seeing a bunch of stuff that's not in the oh, okay. movie. Like I don't remember his metal face going metal. Oh, well, the movie, these are the comments. questions I have for you later. We'll, we'll right. definitely get to that. Uh, but good news, listeners of this very podcast. If you go to MacWeldon.com, you can get 20% off using promo code FILM. That's F I L M. Go to MacWeldon.com. 20% off. Please do it. Support them, support us. It's all good and stuff. So thank you, Mac Weldon, for sponsoring us so we can continue talking about 
the CGI fest that is Justice League. That's another problem. The special effects are, are relatively bad. Like most of them are pretty bad. So well, they yeah. just set the bar really high for themselves. With they what? did. I mean, they just like everything is, you know, Batman in a costume, Jason Momoa in a costume, and Wonder Woman in a costume. <laughs> And they are then put into like this. By the way, all that turned into red by the final move. That's a t- this is what these are the clips of they're showing. Mm-hmm. They changed the entire color set, the entire color palette of the movie after this trailer clip that we're seeing came out. Yeah. There's so much stuff that if you watch the trailers, you're like, that's not in it. This like is garbage. That's that's weird that this is the stuff that they released. Um, yeah. I, I just so from watching <laughs> the more I watch of this and just seeing Ben Affleck. He he looks like a man who has no interest in being in this film no, franchise. He's it in. I think I think he was down for it because like I still stand that Bruce Wayne was one of the better parts of Batman. Yeah, Superman. he's yeah. great. Yeah, it no, was a, I, like, I had high hopes for him because he was pretty damn good. And in this though, I think he saw how things were going, and yeah. he was like, "What are you guys trying to pull off? Like, I'm a filmmaker. Mm-hmm. Like, I know this isn't gonna work." And they're like, "Do it." You know, do it, Bruce. And he's like, oh, all right. But I, ben. I think he, they probably brought him back so many fucking times to change the line of a scene that he knew that it was going to be bad His news. His face looked so weird when they were on that plane, him and Alfred. Oh, yeah. Well, it's because he looks really tired and old. And like, I don't know if they were putting old makeup on him. I don't know. Well, sometimes he had like gray in his hair and sometimes he didn't yeah. Yeah. have gray in his hair. And it, um, like, If I had to talk about something really good about this movie, yeah, Wonder yeah. Woman. Wonder Woman is she's great. always fantastic. The three movies she's appeared in now, mm-hmm. always great. Metaphorically and literally carrying this film. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I really appreciated that they made her the, the most OP member, like until Superman shows up. She mm-hmm. is most OP member. Yeah. Sure. And it's, it's not like Wonder Woman. Batman is the, the center figure that's facing off against Steppenwolf. No, it's Wonder Woman because of course it's Wonder Woman. Well, she's the one that she's the only one who can fight him. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, mean, I appreciated got a magical. He keeps that getting they his ass didn't kicked. Do that. <laughs> I'm uh, yeah. He's like he's like I'm gonna get really high in the sky and just hope for the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? so it, the the weird my weird thing going in a big reason why I'm hesitant for this and I I don't I don't believe that film needs need to mirror the source material 100. Mm. percent I, I feel like that can turn into a really bad product, but it can also, I think you take the good with the bad. My thought always with Batman was, he was always the reluctant member Mm -hmm. of the Justice League. He was always sort of in the shadows and he was like basically funding them. He's like, oh, I'm a fucking billionaire, trillionaire, whatever. I can can keep this thing going to protect the world. But he was always two steps ahead of everyone else. In this one, he just seems like a Tony Stark. There's some- It just, it seems like a weird role that they're going with. There is some implication, I'll give them benefit of the doubt, that Batman is smarter than everyone else, right? There's there's talks of contingency plan, yeah, right? He, he like it looks that. like he understands this is what needs to happen, but there could be an implication. They could make a play in a follow up movie or whatever that it's like, oh, this whole time Batman knew exactly how to shut this down if he needed to. There is some of that, but he is the Tony Stark. He does serve the Tony Stark role in this movie. It just, it just, of, just typically the way it worked it. was and this made more sense it was superman rounding everyone up because he's the most powerful one and saying i need your help I'm like oh shit yeah. superman needs my help wow yeah. okay and batman's always like okay i don't do team things mm-hmm. yeah. but call me when you need me well, and i was always like one, oh, okay this one everybody's talking shit about him the whole time because he's <laughs> oh, getting yeah. his ass kicked constantly and he even says it in the movie he's like He's basically like, I can't beat these guys up on my own. I can barely take up, you know, one of these winged monkeys. Um, so you guys are gonna have to do it, yeah, and, and like, I'll just be hanging out. <laughs> they're like, "What's your power, puss?" So oh, you don't have. One. <laughs> the weird thing is that like, in like the final battle, like Avengers did the final battle great, where it would just swing to show what everyone's doing at different times. It's all in the daytime too. This is not this is not an Avengers final battle, but in the end, Batman probably ended up taking out way more than any. Like yeah, that's true. Like Aquaman. Spears like three dudes yeah, individually, yeah, and that's yeah. it. You know, and then, like that's about as much as they do. They establish that Flash has a different kind of perspective on fighting. So, you know, his whole thing. There's you keep see they keep we keep seeing the scene of him touching Wonder Woman's sword. It's a great scene. It's yeah, a really good no, scene I've... where it shows like how he can be useful without necessarily getting in there and punching people because he doesn't have any training. He's no. just super. He's a kid. He's, he's really super fast. fast. Okay. Yeah. But it's it's still really strange because they don't show how all those things work in tandem to help them be victorious. Well, and then I, I thought the the inclusion of cyborg was weird. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess it was the the coin toss was do we go cyborg or Green Lantern? 
um, and they're both going to be CGI heavy. I, I, did it end up being as bad as it looks? Cyborg, no. They got they got to the best version of Cyborg that I've seen Cy thus far. Cyborg so. plays into the plot a lot, actually, because mm -hmm. he is part of the technology that Steppenwolf is using to try and destroy the world. Yeah, and he's Ooh. a ghostwriter. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes. He's kind of like, I'm, I'm really angry and I can't control myself. <laughs> no, another no, no, time. No. Well, he like literally oh, takes ghost, over computers ghost and then writer. types out clues. Oh, ghostwriter. Yeah, writer. I remember when he like communicates <laughs> Wonder Woman and he's uh, like, yeah. I yeah, know. Yeah, right. He is yeah. a ghostwriter. I was I like, ghost, ghostwriter. Um, Sorry, Nick. No, no, no but, you're, but you're right. Like, and, But there are other times like he basically you assume he cannot control his armor all the time. Mm -hmm. And so which doesn't make any sense to me because really it doesn't really ever play into the story only, except for it's, one time yeah. and it's very minor um, but well, I, isn't isn't it he's using like yeah. apocalypse technology yes. or whatever yes. right yes. Yeah, he absolutely I mean, is there's like isn't one like a good moment there's one moment where okay. he's like ah I don't know about this I was going to say it's kind of a good I would just think that would be a good sort of twist narrative not so much a twist but a reveal of oh my god he's the he's the source he says he's, it outright well, he says it like right away. He's like, I can't control this. Okay. I'm kind of fucked. Well, there's like one <laughs> moment in the movie where his inability to control it plays into a scene, yeah, right? Very briefly. But it's weird because even that has a line which implies that it had nothing to do with the source of his power. Because he's like, oh, it's just my self defense mechanism. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, you're right. And I'm like, that betrays. Like, that, that's, you you, just tie that in. You, had, you had your screenwriters out. I mean, a lot of this, a lot of the negative comes to the fact that you watch it and you're like, "This is an amalgamation of things. No. This is an amalgamation of different creative visions, not coming together harmoniously, but coming together just kind of like because we have a deadline. It has to be done at a certain point. Um, this movie wasn't earned. That being said, it's rarely slow. It's mostly this. It's two hours. It's it's two hours long. Yeah. Yeah. It's mostly drag. this. No, there's none drag. of the Batman v Superman who's shot the bullet bullshit. You know, there's a little bit of Lois Lane stuff, but really, like, you forgot that you. By the time she returns, you forgot that she was in the movie. Her in the return's first place. great because when they're in the they're in the like cornfield and she's like Car Car failed you I wasn't a good reporter yeah and he's like what, what are you talking like, yeah. about they're like well no because he, he, when Superman comes back he doesn't know what's happening so when she walks out there and says those things he's like who yeah <laughs> there were these weird moments where they're trying to inject character arcs except they're like we got two scenes so at the beginning of the movie uh it's Martha Kent talking to Lois Lane and going like how you holding up I can't she's report. Like, she's like, she's like, I'm, I'm just a, doing fluff pieces. I'm, I'm a bad reporter. Like, I'm not doing, I'm not doing the hard hitting journalism that I used to. And she's like, she's like, Clark would want you to do it. And she's like, <laughs> yeah. she's like, she's like, I know it's just really hard because the person I love died. And he proofread my ago, copy. Uh, two so months ago, I'm not sure. <laughs> I need my him. Copy. Yeah, and so and so then at the end of the movie, they have her come back and her like redemption moment or whatever is supposed to be. <laughs> it's supposed to be her going like, "I'm sorry, Clark. I did fluff pieces." <laughs> and he genuinely maybe the CGI mustache, but he genuinely goes like, "Ooh, I what? fucking I'm back from the dead." Yeah. yeah. Well, like, I don't you, care and about your life. The one thing you guys mentioned that like pains me, but you said when. <laughs> Batman sees Superman for the first time. He has a smile on his well, face. Well, when Superman comes back oh to help at the God. very last, in the last climactic battle scene. They think they're going to have to do it alone. They think, I and, was and dying. They're, they're fighting it alone. And then obviously Superman's alive. We don't know where he is and we don't know why he hasn't come with yeah. him. Is he but wearing he, a black suit? or that, no. No. Let's reenact okay. it. I'll what? be Superman. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. All so right. I'll be Steppenwolf. So, yeah. You will fail me for me. <laughs> I'm really scared. You're going to die. I'm really scared Eat of my Batman. axe, which is important. <laughs> hey, I'm back. But <laughs> <laughs> and he smiles. It's just because Batman's always scowling, right? He's yeah. always like, well, that's his, but he goes like, but then when he smiles, he goes, Bruh. whoa! And he's also hanging on the wall at the time. He's like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> it's really, it's really it does, weird. It stands out. There's a lot of moments like that I'm just, that are jarring. You're it's like, like, why didn't well, you show me that? When you when you mention it, it's just because like my my memory of it is the last time he saw Superman, he was trying to kill him. They're both trying to kill each other. That, yeah. So that, and he's like, "Will you does, bleed?" You know, it's like they're they're killing each other. That comes into play. And then at the very last minute, like, we got to work together. And they go, "Okay." And then Superman dies. And he goes, "Well, shit." And then so for him to be like, "Boy, oh boy!" Well, like, well, they try and my figure friend's it out. Bad. They, they try and figure it out. Because like, okay. then when they wake Superman up, Batman's like. Oh, you guys go. Yeah, no, he's scared again. He's a puss. He's a puss. We'll see what he says to you guys. I'll hide behind this truck. He's definitely a puss. Yeah. Batman make Batman a puss? Yeah, 100%. Well, he, I think he understands. Yeah. Because he's all, he, like, 
getting into it, Batman goes, listen, we're going to fucking die if Superman doesn't come back. <laughs> and, and we need Superman. And then ever and everyone else is like, I don't know. I think Cyborg is like, my calculations dictate yes, we need him. <laughs> um, but Wonder Woman's like, that sounds like a bad idea. You remember how you guys kind of ended things, uh, yeah, right? Yeah. And then he goes, yeah, yeah. He's like, well, maybe I'll just not. Like, you just say hey. Yeah. <laughs> so you say hey, and if he's all good, then... Um, Okay, keep on. I'm just I'm gonna go to a scene that means a lot to me. Oh, okay. Let's see. Hold on. So this is a big thing. Blah blah blah. Whatever. Is this when he was so, only using part of his strength? So, well, well, no. Th this is less about Superman. This is more about Batman. So, like I said earlier, I'm a big fan of the Justice League cartoon, which is really good. Check it out. And anyway, yeah. this is a big reveal when Darkseid comes in. He kicks everyone's ass. He's kicking Superman's ass. And then there's this part where fucking. Oh, it's Ooh. all. It's really jarring. That's a big hit. But. This is a scene that I always thought it, it perfectly showed why the writing was good. But like Batman's trying to fight this god. Yeah. And it's sort of like he's not a puss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, yeah, he's yeah, in this yeah. one he's a puss. Oh, yeah, I mean he's, he's he generally yeah. he's like he's like I built this big machine to fight. Right. This stuff. Well, there's like the so there's a night crawler and the jet yeah. and all those but, like, but I mean like but, but he, we, he does say like he's literally hiding behind a truck when Superman comes back. <laughs> I just, he's like it's all right out there. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a gun. Does he look angry? <laughs> he's this, crushed by it and he's got a gun like this. <laughs> this the scene it meant a lot to me because it was Superman saying that man will keep fighting till his last breath. It doesn't matter if he has a power or not. It's like that's what inspires me to fight. And he's like, I'm and basically like, I'm going to give it all my, everything I have now. And it's like, oh, fuck yeah, cool. That's the writers going, how can we make Batman not suck? Well, he's kind because of a, he has no power. He's a badass in Batman v Superman. Like, he's a crazy badass. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And in this one, he's not. He's not. No. It's like I, a different I, character. So I heard there was like the, remember the fight scene from Batman v Superman? Yeah. Um, where it's like, that's probably one of the best parts of the movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, breaks it. I'm, I'm sure, you know, he takes out a machine gun and blows people away, which is a little weird. Uh, <laughs> but... I was like, oh, cool, they're actually showing Batman do Batman stuff. I heard none of that's in this movie. There's At the beginning, some, they show basically the Michael Keaton Batman running around uh, like toy Gotham City. <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of that. There's, really there's some stuff of him grappling, hook swinging, but then generally it'll cut to some other CG thing, Ugh. like shooting beams at a certain point. There aren't any beam fights, which I guess is good. True, there are no um, beam fights. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I... I Tim Geddes mentioned it, and then I was thinking about it when I came out of it. It does feel a lot like uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, right? Which I like, never saw. Teenage Mutant oh, Ninja I, Turtles I, 2. The new one. The new one. Yeah, uh, we like, enjoyed it. Watched it, Rock never Rock got bored. It was kind of like, I mean, it wasn't good, yeah. but it was like, you never got bored watching. You didn't walk away going like, oh man, that relationship between Raphael and Leonardo was really explored well. I mean, you were kind of like, I really like how they made Bebop and Rocksteady gay, but like, that was like the rest of it was fun, and there's a little bit of cheese in there with like Will Arnett, but for the most part, it's the Ninja Turtles kicking ass and doing cool shit all over the world. This is that's Justice League. The only problem is that the source material for this could have they could have done something sure. good. Yeah, I they think, just don't know how to resolve the fact that Superman is still a god. Yeah, I, he's I, better than everyone else. I, this movie's at a distinct disadvantage uh, because. I feel like if event, if you had seen Avengers and not seen any of the other Marvel movies before that, not if they hadn't even come out, mm -hmm. let's say you knew nothing about it and you went and watched Avengers, I think you might have thought certain things about Avengers that you did about Justice League, which was, I don't really understand the characters. Like, I, why should I care about these people? Why do I care about their relationships? But again, as we said a hundred times before, Marvel really put in the time. They wanted to like, ma they made a bunch of movies that weren't very good, to be honest with you. Like, when, uh, the first Captain America was like, okay. Mm. Those movies are only okay. Thor's meh. They had Thor's meh, but Avengers made it better. With this, it's it's a, it's, in my opinion, it was just a cash grab. It's just yeah. a cash grab on yeah. characters people already know. Yeah, well, they establish all the relationships. In Civil War, there's that moment when Captain America's pleading with Tony Stark and he says, um, you know, Winter Soldier, he's my friend. Yeah. And Tony Stark says, I thought I was your friend too. It means a lot. Yeah. And, you, and that means something. And you think, oh, yeah, they, you know, they have this history. They're friends. And this Batman's like, well, we're to go bring Superman back because he's my friend. Yeah. And then he comes back and he's so happy. And then he's <laughs> like, like I'm my friend's back. My friend's back. And you're like, I don't know, Batman. Did you, were you? Did you, were you, you met? Did he you spent ever, like two minutes with him. Yeah, did you ever hang out outside of Lex Luthor's party? Yeah. And punching each other to death. Do they ever flash back to that? Like and then Batman's buddies? like, what? Like no. Batman, Superman, just having a beer on the porch. I don't think no. they ever do. Yeah, and then Batman's like, maybe Wonder Woman will be into me, and and everyone's like, even Alfred's like, <laughs> what? Fuck you say? Like, yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> way she's into you. Yeah, no, it's true. And like, oh, is Batman trying to hook up with Wonder Woman? Kind of. I mean, again, I don't know. it doesn't so matter. Dumb. None of it matters because you don't care. 
Like you, you didn't know Batman liked Wonder Woman until he says it, sort of. And then, <laughs> and then Alfred's like, "What? No, you can't get that." And I, and I, and I was in the movie theater being like, "What? Uh, you can't get that." Um, I was gonna ask. So I, I read a thing online that said they tweak the ending of the movie to not tease Dark Side so much mm. because. Depending on how this movie did, they may just end it here mm. and then do the Aquaman, Batman, Flash, Wonder Woman stuff and then probably start again. Uh-huh. Th- th- um, they need to start again. <laughs> they do. They need to start again. This is garbage. They had like four tries. Wonder that, Woman's great. Wonder Woman's a great movie. And the Amazons sure. are great. But the, but the rest, everything this is garbage. Batman v they Superman's just, garbage. Suicide Squad's garbage. Even what you're saying about Avengers, I think you'd be confused as to who everyone is, but I think you would understand that ultimately the perspective of Avengers 1 is a bunch of people with a bunch of different goals have to come together to fight one mm-hmm. common enemy, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. This doesn't really have that. It's most like literally the scene with Batman going to get the Flash is like, you're the Flash. And he goes, you're Batman. He like tells him right away. He's like, it's like, you're the Flash, you're the Batman. He's like, he's like, I need you to fight me. And Flash goes, okay. Like, that's it. Like, it's, yeah. that's it. Everyone is kind of treated like the way well, Ant Man is treated in Civil yeah. War, which is that, like, he's just recruated. Yeah, I'll just, and he's like, I'll like, do oh, where, what do you, where do you need me for? Yeah. yeah, well, Flash is like, I need friends. And then Batman's like, oh, sorry, I already have a best friend in Superman. Yeah, but, <laughs> Superman's you my know, best friend. Like, you want to be my girlfriend. Like, you can still be my friend, but. <laughs> I have a best friend. Uh, so does it does it end in a way that they're going to be doing more of this? Yeah, it does. Like, it they're definitely like, they're all they're all heroes. As now. long as they're contractually obligated. Well, there's a, a there's two endings. There's the mid credits, and then there's the final final credits. I didn't see the final credits. Oh, really? I didn't stay. The final no. final credits no. is a very heavy, like we are doing more. Oh. We're doing more of these, and okay. you're going to like it. Well, it made a a quarter of a billion. Over the worldwide, oh, really? uh, yeah, 100 yeah. million domestically. Yeah, yeah. Which I don't. 70 million off of its estimates, which, by the way, really? 95 million dollars in one weekend, and it's a failure. This we we've gotten officially out of hand. Man, that's well, when the movie costs 200 million dollars and it has three million. three directors, it costs 300 million dollars yeah. to Wait, make three? this movie. Did, did they shoot two 200 million dollar movies? Wonder Woman just wrapped oh. up a bunch of domestic. Uh, landmarks or milestones like best number one domestic origin mm. movie superhero origin um, maybe category? even like number one oh it's just, it's just all these arbitrary just, like but that good. made that rounded out at like 400 and something mm. million dollars <laughs> also <stupid> domestic goggles. <laughs> Aquaman's trident by the way has five tips on it oh yeah it does it's, a right. five it's not a trident it's not a trident interesting I think he even says a trident if I had to review oh, no, this movie I would say that the closest I could come to it is to tell you that about halfway through, this guy that was seated like th- three seats away from James pulled out his phone and started shining his flashlight as he was like dumping one bag of popcorn into another. <laughs> and, yeah, it was insane, and though. sorting out all his stuff. He was a crazy person. And that's probably my review. Easy. I was like, like he would pull out his phone and use the flashlight to like figure out what was happening in his own lap. And I'm like, it's not that dark in here. Like. <laughs> He was like a blind person. Weird. That's a solid great. review, Bruce. Yeah. Uh, I think if you liked any part of Suicide Squad, you'll like this film. Any part of it. If you thought Suicide Squad was garbage all the way through, you will not like this movie. True. I thought Suicide Squad was garbage all the way through, and I like this more. Well, yeah, it's definitely better. It's, I mean, it's one hundred percent. Suicide Squad than... treated me like I was a fucking idiot. <laughs> this movie is just broken. This movie is just like <laughs> it does feel broken. It's just like. Too many, too many cooks in the kitchen, Ugh. all building something different. I don't, I don't know if you see it in the theaters. To be honest, I had a great time. I think if you see it in the theaters, that's the only time you you should ever see it. Yeah, Adam was talking about how you weren't too inclined to go see it, and you were like, maybe I'll watch it on a plane. I don't know how much you'll get out yeah. of that. Like, you're, you're gonna hate it. It's it's just not boring. It's not boring. I, like I, it I, it has nothing, no other substance. Yeah, but it feels, it's feels not, like a video game though. It, it feels like the, the the effects are garbage, and it looks well, it looks like a video game on a smaller screen. I saw it on a kind of a garbage theater at like this really cheap theater, and it looked worse than normal. Like if I had seen it in a huge theater with we big saw special IMAX. effects, yeah, like that would have yeah. helped. I think this I saw it on a small screen, and it, I was like watching it on a TV, and I, I was just like, this looks like total shit, wow. and it, I just didn't. I, I think that it is, it is a big picture kind of vibe. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, there were a lot, like Bruce said, there were a lot of moments where I was like, all right, now it's going to pull out and now I'm going to start playing. 
Oh yeah, yeah. You know? like, <laughs> so but it doesn't. Long. But again, it's only two hours. It's, it's only two hours. It's well, only two hours. If I made I made a I made a quick list of things I would rather do okay. than go see Justice League this week. <laughs> okay. um, I think I'm gonna watch Mr. Robot. Okay. I already have a second character that's light level 290 in Destiny. Really? I might start a third. All right, go for it. Yeah. Um, I might download Wolfenstein. I'm thinking I'm gonna play a little bit of Mario Odyssey. Those are probably uh, better. Uh, I want to keep watching The Good Place. Search uh, Party's back on TBS second yeah, season. Yeah, I think I might start a whole new show. Um, and then if I get through that stuff, I might go see Justice. Then you won't see Aquaman go, yeah, like that. No, I, 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 like I've that. seen it in the trailer <laughs> three thousand times because they, I've seen it before every freaking movie that's come out. You, Adam, don't try to do all those things. Just try to do one. Just, just do, do one. one. Just do one. Okay. Just do one. Could I do Justice one? League? Justice League. <laughs> My man. My man. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for watching and or listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, tell a friend or two. This is a teleporter. That's where he comes down. He goes, hey, what's up? Hello, I'm the bad guy. I am Steppenwolf. Yeah, Steppenwolf. I'm here for the box. <laughs> Bye. Uh, thank you to Mac Weldon for sponsoring <laughs> said podcast. Thank you guys for uh, enlightening me into what this uh, experience is going to be. I'm looking great. forward to it. Oh, One last word. I'm not angry at the movie. <laughs> no. no, I had a good no, time. No, no. I think I think everyone knowing about the production woes yeah. and seeing the trailers and all this stuff, I think you're gonna it's gonna hit you right on par with what your ex it set the bar for you. Tempered um, expectations. Don't worry. Keep an eye out. Ragnarok I, just came out if you want something good. Keep an eye out for that CG lip. That's <laughs> oh, my boy. favorite part of the movie. CG lip. CG lip when he smiles. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs> <laughs> so Geostorm much like those other films, I feel like it's one. Of, it's beautiful because it's not Sharknado. It's not someone going out of their way to make a bad movie. It is. It's bad because they tried, <laughs> and I love that. So I don't know. Let's. Well, that's well. the cornerstone of a good movie. It has to be sincere. Mm -hmm. It has to be sincere, and it has to beg a lot of questions. Most.